and then they go out on submission and you have a conversation about how in the loop do, do they want to be in. They say, well, I, I have you, Mark, because you're going to worry about it and I'm not even going to think about it until you come back to me or are you updating them on a regular basis? How do you handle that? Is it vary from client to client? Uh, varies from client to client. So I have some people who are, it's like they're very masochistic. They're like, I want to know every pass as it comes in. And then <laughs> there are other people who say to me, I don't want to hear anything unless it's an offer. I just can't stand it. My skin isn't thick enough. Um, and then there are other people who say, well, let's check in every, you know, month or two or three months. And then you just send me a batch of what you have. And if I, you know, I guess I'll hear from you when I hear from you, especially if it's an offer. Um, so yeah, it's different depending on the person and the submissions process we give it. I say it's good to give at least three to four months, but there are books I've sold in as little as like a couple days. You know, there are books which, you know, took months. Um, so every, every author and every project or every submission is different. I assume when you say, yes, you've already got in your mind, some ideas of where you're going to submit to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I share the submission list with the client and craft a pitch. You know, we go out on submission to various editors at different publishing houses and, you know, try and field offers from them and negotiate to the best of terms and present the client with an offer. That's the ideal you know, scenario. Um, you know, I like to cast a wide net in terms of the publishers I look at for clients. Because when I started out in doing this, I thought, oh, I'm just going to do submissions and rounds. And it was like, in most cases, it was like being stuck in purgatory. You know, I found that it was a much better result when you mixed a lot of people in because you know, a, a younger editor or an editor at a, maybe even an independent publisher might feel more compelled to get, make, put an offer to get their read quickly, get out there ahead of the big guys. And then that's a chance, an opportunity for me to quietly, but respectfully say to the other publishers, Hey, we have an offer in, I'm not saying for how much from who or how much, but you might want to make an offer of, of your own. And, uh, it, in doing so, it can really light a fire under people, you know? They don't know if the offer is from, you know, Penguin Random House or Scholastic or what. It could be from anywhere. Those are very valuable tips. I think if uh, any literary agents are listening, and it, yeah. there's probably a few. Uh, if you're not doing that, maybe that's, <laughs> that's something to do. Uh, so you get that going. And then how involved are you throughout the process? Do you want to be there with the client um, as obviously through the contract, but then when they're working with the editor, yeah. do you want to be involved with that at all? Yeah, a lot of agents, unfortunately, they just kind of check out after the book deal is done, it's almost as though it were like, you know, that was it. Like they're on to the next thing because they're kind of trying to churn business. Again, they're worried about where the next book deal is coming from. Me, it's different because, you know, I see myself staying at the company. I see the authors who are with me, growing with me in the company. So um, I like to be involved in the publishing process to help authors wherever they feel, you know, my help is wanted or needed by them. And so one of the things I do, for instance, I ask publishers for their marketing and publicity plans so that, you know, I can look at them with the client, we can try and comment and improve upon them at the same time, see the things we can be doing on our own to help the client. Um, I'll ask the publisher for things like a production calendar of events, which is basically it looks like a calendar and then on different days written in the calendar are, here's when your cover is going to be available. Here's when the first pass pages or the second pass pages, you know, the edited pages of your manuscript are going to be available. Here's when we're going to have ARCs or galleys so that the author's not in the dark. They know when to expect this stuff. They don't have to be asking the publisher all the time. When's it going to happen? When's it coming in? And then they know how to be promoting their book. They can debut their cover because they know when the cover art's going to be available to them, that type of thing. 